Hey guys, it's Courtney and welcome back. Today I'm going to be focusing on a couple different techniques that you guys actually requested. And I'll be using the latest La La Land stamp monthly stamp kit here. And I'll be using the larger image, this little girl. And we're going to be stamping this four times. I'm using my Misty here just to make it a little bit easier. And I'll be stamping with Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. And I'm stamping on Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. We will be doing some Copic coloring and we're gonna be concentrating on hair and skin tones as well as a center highlight for mainly her clothing. So we will start with the skin tones here and this is my go-to. So this is the one that I'll typically use. I'm starting off with my E50, which is my lightest color and just mapping out my darkest areas. My darkest areas will be underneath where her hair is laying over her face, on the inside of her little arms where they're kind of tucked behind her shirt, and in the inside of her little legs there. Next I'll go in with my darkest color. This is my E04 and I'm just barely touching the tip of my marker to the paper and here is where I forgot about her little neck or her little chest there. But I'm barely touching the paper and putting in my very, very darkest areas, which will be in those same areas that we laid our lightest color in. Next, I'll move on to my darkest midtone, which is my E11, and then just extending that E04 out just a bit. Then we'll move on to the E01 and extend that out even further. Now her face is very large, so you're gonna have a larger highlight on her face than anywhere else. I'm not really worried about it. As long as you preserve a little bit of a highlight on her arms and legs, it doesn't matter that, that her face will have more of a highlight. Last, I'll go in with that lightest color again, that E50, and blend all of those colors out. Even a small highlight will make a big difference, so just make sure that you do leave yourself a little bit of room. Going in with my R20, just to add a little bit of color to her cheeks, and then blending that back out with my E50. I'll also add a little bit of color to her lips. Now I'm going to speed this up because I colored them the same way, it's just the color combinations are a little bit different. For this one, I'm going to make her very fair skin. So my darkest colors are still very light and they're actually R markers. So I'm going to create my shadows with kind of like a pinky flesh color and then blend that out with my E markers. But again, putting the shadows in the same areas that I did for the first one. And once I have my lightest color back down, I'll go back in with my R20 to add the color to her cheeks as well as her little lips. For the next one, I'm going to darken up her skin tones a little bit, and I'll be going in with my E11, which is my lightest color. Again, back mac it, mapping out, sorry, I can't speak, mapping out my darkest areas and then going in with my darkest color. Now, my darkest color is a very dark color, so I'm just putting that in select areas and using a very light hand. Again, putting my shadows in the same areas. Sometimes I forgot with her legs. I kind of put my shadows in different spots than what I intended, just out of habit. But nobody will notice in the in the end. Nobody's going to look at your card and say your shadowing on your legs is different than the shadowing on your arms. So again, going in with my R20, adding that color to her lips and her cheeks. And then moving on to the last little girl here, which will be the darkest skin tones. And I'm using my E50s which typically I use my E50s for my hair, but it does work out for skin as well. Again, the E59 is a very dark color, so you'll wanna use that sparingly, because if you use too much of it, you're gonna cover up her little eyes and you're not even gonna see her eyes anymore. Coloring this in the same exact way as I have been, the only difference here is I will add my R20 for her cheeks and her lips, but later on, I did darken them up by going to an R22, just because you really couldn't see them that much because the skin tone was a little bit too dark for that light of a, a color. 
once I had all of my skin done, we'll move on to the hair. And again, colored them pretty much the same way with just different color combinations. We'll start out with this first little girl here and we're gonna make her blonde. And I'm starting with my E15, which is obviously a brown marker. I always start with my darkest colors when, I, when it comes to hair because I wanna preserve those flicks that we're creating to give that hair some dimension and some highlights. You don't need to. If you feel comfortable starting with your light color, start with your light color and move to your darkest. That's that's fine. You just won't get you won't be able to preserve the flicks as much depending on how much you blend those colors out. I'm concentrating my darkest areas being where her little hair is parted off to the side and where it's kind of tucked behind her where her little headband is where her little bangs are hanging down that would also create a shadow and where those little strands of hair hang over the rest of her hair would also create a shadow. I'm also going to add a few shadows here, just kind of wherever I want. There's really no rhyme or reason for this. Her hair is straight, it's not curly, so you can pretty much just put your highlights and your shadows wherever you feel like it. I'm using very, very light pressure here, varying the size of my flicks and barely touching the paper. When I say barely touching the paper, sometimes I'm even missing the paper. So don't, don't be afraid to, you know, you go as light as possible. Next, I'll move on to my darkest mid-tone, which is a YR marker, and this will kind of lighten up that brown. Again, the brown is the shadow. So it, it doesn't necessarily need to all be yellow just because she's a blonde. But I am going over that e, E15 just to lighten it up and extending those flicks out a little bit further with this YR24. Now I'm leaving a pretty large highlight here, keeping in mind that I can always go back and add more dark. I can't take it away. So when you're doing hair especially and you wanna preserve those flicks, leave that large highlight most of the time it will work out. Um, and, and every once in a while, you may have to go back and add a little bit of dark. I did on a couple of mine. Next, I'm going in with my Y23 and extending those flicks out even further. Again, still leaving that highlight there. My intention was to use four colors or four shades, I guess, for her hair. And I wish I would have just left it like this and left that highlight white almost but I ended up going in with my Y02 because I wanted her hair to be nice and bright. And I ended up making it a little too bright, brighter than I normally color my blondes, but it's okay. I left it. There's different variations that you can use for blonde hair. And like I said, if you don't want it as bright, skip this part, just leave that highlight. You can leave that highlight even having some white space. It'll just make her hair look shiny. I will speed this up again because like I said, I colored their hair almost the same way. This one, I am going to make her a little redhead and I'm starting with my E09, again, mapping out my darkest areas. You'll notice that some of these little girls have different shadow and different highlight areas. Just to kind of show you that you can pretty much put them wherever you want. You can put as little shadows as you want you can just kind of put shadows on the top of her head and on the bottom of her hair and it'll still work out perfectly fine. Depending on how much of each shade you use, you'll get a different result every time. So honestly, you just have to play around, play around with your color combinations, play around with the amount of colors that you use and the amount of color that you put down on your paper. You'll get a different result every time. In this case, just like with the first card, I wish I would have left out my lightest color, my highlight color, I guess. It was a little bit too yellow, and I kind of lost her being a redhead by using it, but I do go in later and add a little bit of my darkest colors to kind of tone that down and take that brightness away. Because like I said, you can always go back and add more dark. You can't take it away. For the next little girl, we're going to make her a brunette and we're going to move back into these E50 markers. The E50s are 
kind of my go-to for pretty much anything brown, whether it be wood grain, hair, sometimes skin, animals, it works well with. So again, just adding my darkest color here, varying my flicks, wanting to leave that large highlight, and I'm really, really going light down on the paper here. Now this will only work if your nibs are in good shape. So if you're new to Copics, like when I first got my Copics, I was a little bit too heavy handed and I kind of lost the point on some of my nibs. So eventually keeping up with Copics is very expensive. So I haven't done all of them, but I will replace the nibs, especially for the colors that I do need that really pointy tip on. And the E59 is one of those. So just go very light handed. You do not have to press very hard. If you're filling in a large area, you know, not anything like hair, but maybe a background, use the side of the nib. That way you won't ruin your nibs and always make sure that your markers are full. If they need refilling, don't try to blend. You're not going to get the results you're looking for and you will end up ruining that nib. For this last little girl, I'm going to color her hair black. And this is going to look crazy, but I'm going to start with a blue marker. This is a B16 or B18. And I'm just laying out my darkest areas just like I've been doing all along. 99% of this blue will be covered up, so don't panic. You can always add more darker, more, more dark colors than you maybe intended if you have too much blue showing. And I, I did that as well. I do that most of the time that I color black hair. Once I had my blue down, I moved on to my darkest color, which is actually the black marker. And I'm just adding a little bit here. I'm not extending my flicks as much as I've done on the other three little girls because I'm going to use my C markers on this hair as well. And I'm starting off with my C7 after I'm done with my black. And that's a very, very dark gray. It's nearly black itself. So I'm not really worried about putting all that much black down to begin with. When I do move on to my C7, I'm pretty much going over the entire blue area. So I'm using my blue as my guide as far as how, how long I want to extend my C7, which is my darkest gray. Once I have that down, I'll move on to my C5 and extend that out even further. Again, leaving that highlight, and you can definitely leave white when it comes to black hair. It'll make it look super shiny. In this case, I didn't leave any white, but you certainly can. I went in with my C3 marker and filled in those highlight areas. And there were a couple different spots here that my the, that blue color was showing just a little bit too much. So I did go back in with my C7 and extend those flicks out just a little bit to cover that blue. I want the blue to be the undertone, but I don't want it to be the main tone. So once I had that, the rest of that C7 down, I just went in with my C3 to extend or to blend that out into the hair just a little bit. Now I'm going to go back and fix up some of the hair that I wasn't really all that happy with. I added a few freckles to her cheeks and blended that out with that lightest color for her skin. And here I'm going to go in and add more of my darker colors. That Y marker that I used just left her hair just a little bit too bright. I wasn't really happy with the color. So I'm going in with my darker colors and skipping out on that highlight and darkening her hair up to make her look like more of a true redhead. And I was much happier with these results. Next, we will move on to their little outfits. And I colored them all the same exact way. So I'm only going to show you one here. And this is where we're going to bring in that center highlight. So I'm starting off with my E30, which is the dark, or the, I'm sorry, the lightest color, but putting it in the darkest areas which for her little vest here will be on the outside because our highlight is going to be in the center. So whatever's closest to the center of her body, that's going to be the lightest color. For her little shoes, I'm making sure that I put a little shadow over that little 
curvy line, which was where her toes are, I guess, because that would create a highlight as well. Next, going in with my E37, and I'm just going to create a line here over my darkest areas, which again will be on the outside of her vest and the outside of her little shoes and over, over her little toe area. Next for the E33, I'll extend that E37 out and I'm just, it's a small area, but I'm, I am doing my flicking here just to make my blending a little bit easier in the end. Same thing for the shoes, just going over those darkest areas and extending those out, making sure I leave that highlight on her toes. Next for the E31, extending that E33 out almost all the way, just leaving a very small area for my E30 so I can go back in with my highlight. Same thing for the shoes. And last, we'll go back to that E30 and blend all of that out. Next for her shirt that underneath her vest, I'm going to, I want this to appear white. So I'm going in with my C3 and I'm just putting a line where her vest is kind of hanging over her shirt. Also on her sleeves where her vest is hanging over. Next, I'll go in with my C1 and I'll flick that out towards the center. And I'm leaving white here. I'm leaving quite a bit of white. But when I'm flicking out to white, I kind of leave the tip of my marker on that line of C3 just for a second and then flick it out to make sure that I'm really able to drag that color out. If you can see your flicks and you don't like that look, quickly go over with your colorless blender just in the center of her shirt and that'll kind of even out those little flicks. Now for her little shirt shorts, as well as her headband, but we'll start with her shorts. I'm using my YG90 markers. Again, mapping out my darkest area with my lightest color. Going in with my darkest color on either side of her shorts and also where her vest is kind of hanging over. Also where the little cuffs are, that would create a shadow. And then start bringing in the darkest color from either side, leaving that highlight in the center. Going in with my two mid-tones and blending those out a bit, leaving just a small area for that highlight. For her headband, again, starting off with my lightest color, my darkest areas will be on either side where the headband is kind of tucked underneath her hair. Kind of just, kind of like what we did with her hair itself. Going in with my darkest color, then blending that out with my two mid-tones, and then just leaving that highlight right on the top of her head, just a small area. These colors blend beautifully, so you really won't notice too much of a difference. Once all of my images were colored, I did go in and clean up any areas I went out of the lines. I did fussy cut them out. Now I use these Fiskars scissors. I love them. They're great for fussy cutting. And I'm just going around the edges and I'm moving slow. I have this sped up quite a bit. Now, if there's any areas you're not sure of, I leave them for last. And I'm cutting off any excess cardstock as I go along they will it kind of gets tangled underneath into your scissors as you're trying to cut so that kind of can mesh it up sometimes so just make sure that you're trimming off any excess as you go along what works for me may not work for you but i clean up any small areas once i'm done so i'm cutting basically the basic shape of her i'm going around her legs around her arms and around her head and hair but underneath her little curl there that she's got going on on her hair, I save that for last. It's too intricate. I'd rather work with a smaller piece of paper when I have to work with such an intricate area. If you're not sure about the white border, leave a large white border because you can go over this twice. So any areas that I the border around my image is a little bit too large or doesn't match the rest of the the image i can go back in and clean some of that area up so it's better to leave too much of a border than not enough now for in between her little legs there i save that for last too because like i said it is easier to work with a smaller piece of paper 
this is true for masks too. As you know, I'm mostly a one layer card maker. So I cut a lot of masks and I do it the same way. I cut my main image and then I'll worry about the more intricate areas later. Now, if you happen to not leave enough of a white border around certain areas, you can go in with a gel pen, a gel pen and a Copic Safe pen. So you can add that border back in with a gel pen, wait till that dries, and then go in with a Copic Safe pen afterwards to fix up that area. Now for the cards themselves, I kept them super, super simple, just because I wanted to show you guys the coloring and not so much the cards. For this first one, I created a cloud background with a stencil and tumbled glass distress oxide inks because that's what I had laying on my table. This one just has a little bit of the distress oxide and tumbled glass in the background, kind of feeding that off to white. This one has an ombre look with the stormy sky and tumbled glass. And same thing for this next one. That is it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.